This episode of Philly Fame TV is sponsored by Top Dog Law. Now y'all already know who to call for any accidents or injury cases. If you want that top dollar, you better get that top dog. You can hit him up on Instagram at Top Dog Law or visit his website www.topdoglaw.com. Welcome back to Philly Fame TV. Once again, appreciate y'all for tapping in. I mean, if this your first time tapping in, make sure y'all like, subscribe, share the content, go look at some of the old content that we got posted on our channel, and catch up to currently. Appreciate for those of y'all that tapped in the episode one, and those of y'all who dropped y'all requests in the comments as far as people y'all wanted to see us do a story on. I checked the comments and I seen quite a few people requesting a Ram Squad, and um, I was like, "Damn, like, I mean, let's let's do the Ram Squad joint next." Like, this one took a little longer to do because I had to do a little bit more digging and research. Because for one, I ain't never really do no interview with nobody directly from Ram Squad, so I ain't got that connection to draw from. And for two, it's not a lot of information out there about the whole group of Ram Squad, like. You know, if you if you look at Ram Squad, most of the stuff you're going to find is Tommy Hill. Cause you know, he's the main member. He had a lot of controversy surrounding him. He was in the media a lot. So that pop up, you know, first and foremost. And the most you might see after that is like Boy Becks, obviously, because, you know, they had the controversial situation that we're going to touch on, too. Like, So that's the main stuff you find. But it was four original members of the rap group Ram Squad. The other two was 6 9 and Swab. Ain't really a whole lot of information out there about them, so, you know, took a little bit longer to get this joint done. But I'm going to speak on what I did, you know, put together, and my personal experience with Tommy Hill, because I did meet him two different times, so I'll give y'all, you know, that story as well. So, first and foremost, you know, you can't talk about Ram Squad without talking about Frank Bank. I mean, a.k.a. Ronnie Johnson, R.I.P. to him. He was killed back in 1997, but prior to that, he was the, you know, they would call the founding member or the founder of the group. You know what I mean? Uh, and according to Tommy Hill, he was actually a owner of club dances along with Bobby Dance. I mean, if y'all from Philly, from that era, then y'all definitely know about club dances. A lot of y'all probably been there before. I mean, but he was, he had something to do with that, which I didn't know prior to, you know, doing the research on this story. But I never knew Frank Bank had, you know, part ownership of that or whatever the case may be. But, you know, Tommy Hill, a.k.a. John Wilson, Troy, a.k.a. Boy Bat, 6 9 Suave. Um, later on, at some point in time, you know, Wiz Gam had became a part of the group or became affiliated with them, but he was definitely, you know, on one of the if not the biggest song that everybody know him for, Ballers, Ballers Up In Here, Wiz Gam was on that song. He was in that video, so, you know, but he wasn't one of the four original members of the group. Those guys, the original guys, they from Richard Island, Ram, Richard Island Mob, they all from Richard Island. Wiz Gam, you know, he claimed Ari Avin, though he from Ari Avin, so he, would, he got connected through them to them, according to him, I believe, to a girl, a mutual girl that knew that he knew that was connected to one of the people from Ram Squad. He ended up linking with them through that, and that's how he, you know, started working with them. Like, but he said, according to him, they was already established group and they was already doing their thing prior to him, you know, becoming a part of it. So, at some point in time, you know, Tommy Hill connected with Joey Marlino. You know, the infamous Notorious, my boss, Skinny Joey. Now, Tommy said they never done no illegal business. They never had no illegal business conversations. Joey and Marlene, no interest was strictly in trying to get into hip-hop and try to become an investor. And he saw, you know, Ram Squad as somebody he wanted to invest in and get in business with as far as music. So, you know... Tommy, you know, was the figurehead, so that was the main person who he was dealing with, you know. Um, I believe Joey Molino had a connection through Universal or somebody who was connected to Universal. 
and was able to, you know, help them get their deal with Universal. So the song, they single, their biggest single, Ballers, Ballers up in here, that John dropped in 2000 as a single. But then the album that it was featured on, which was Random Excess Money Ram, that came out in 2001 on Universal. I mean, the song charted on the Billboard charts, I believe it peaked at like number 37 for several weeks. I think that's the highest it ever peaked, which is, I mean, from Philly, you know what I mean? Being able to even make it on the Billboard charts, Top Jones was, was, was an accomplishment. The album, I believe, made it on the charts as well. It wasn't as high. And I believe it was only for a short period of time, but, you know, it made it on there. So that was the two, like, big accomplishments they made in the industry in a short period of time they was there because I believe they did only lasted for, like, two years, and then they got, eventually, I believe, they was dropped from Universal. So they got their deal in, like, two, 2000, say 2000, so two years later, it could have been 2002. Now... About 2002, that's 2002, 2003, that's, you know, when Club Flow in Philly was, that was the spot to be at Industry Tuesdays, Larry Larry, D. Wood. Welcome to Industry Tuesday! We do this shit every Tuesday! This is nothing new! That's, this is like beginning of the DVD era, but everybody wasn't on DVDs. Everybody didn't have a DVD yet. The only DVDs really was out was... Um, heavy spitters and big stars who were for the streets, you know. So this was one of the spots where people came to get their buzz and get their name. They would have, they would be able to perform, and then they had the Hot 16 battle part of the uh, event. So everybody been down this joint from Joey Jahead, Meek Mill, Reed Dollars, Cicero, and Battle Bugsy down there. You know, all types of people from the city at the time, early 2000s, he was down there. So... You know, also down there, Hollow Man, Paper Chases, this is when the battle with him and Ness had came out. So he was on fire at the time, so pretty much had Club Flow on Smash. So I'm rolling there with him. You know, I'm a young boy at the time. You know, one of these days, Tommy Hill come down there. You know, he come down there to check it out. Like, people used to always come through, even if they weren't performing and stuff. A lot of industry people would come through there, John. That's one of the things Larry Larry and them set up, whereas, though, you know, they had it where the the underground hot artists would come through and they had certain people, special nights that come through, So that, and sometimes random people would come through. So this night, Tommy just came through. After it was over, he invited Hollow and all of us out to another spot. I believe it was like another club. I couldn't tell you exactly what it was. It was so long ago, but I mean, invite us all there, you know, introduce us up to everybody, shake everybody's hand, bought everybody drinks, and was hollering that hollow about something music related, whether you want to do some work with him, do some business with him, X, Y, Z, and the third. So that's my first time meeting him back in, I'd say, 2002, 2003, I believe, something like that. So then later, sometime in 2003, he ended up getting locked up for that situation, you know, with the drugs or whatever, the drug case he caught, the Fed case. They said he sold drugs to, I guess, an informant or undercover cop or whatever. But according to him, he sold it to, well, he gave it to one of his workers. He gave them the work and had them serve the informant or the undercover cop, and they ended up lining him up for it or whatever the case may be. You know, it's well documented, so we ain't got to get too much into that story. But, you know, that happened in 2003. 2004, he pled guilty to the situation. He ended up getting out, according to him, in 2005 and moving to Atlanta. Now, fast forward to 2010. That's when the infamous video of Boy Bags, you know, surfaced on YouTube and went viral about him, you know, allegedly admitting that. You know, he set up Tommy you know, Hill. That boy Bax, a.k.a. Blue. You know what it is. Ram Squad, original underboss. Philadelphia's last underboss. Live and direct. I mean, a lot of motherfuckers speculating this, speculating that. They had a lot of shit to say about this. They had a lot of shit to say about that, but I'm about to clear the air. So he Whatever, and I say alleged because that video surfaced. And then sometime later, I would say January 2011, he had put a video up on his personal YouTube channel, basically recanting that video, saying that that's not what happened. That was a whole, you know, thing between him and Tommy Hill that was set up or whatever. I ain't got to speak too much on that. Y'all can go 
see that video if y'all didn't already. A lot of y'all probably already did. What's up? What's up? This your man, boy Bax, aka Blueface. You know what I'm saying? Fresh off house arrest. It's time to address the issues. So I don't really know what happened if he really did line him up or if he, I mean, if that was something that Tommy told him to say, I don't really know, y'all. Y'all make your own judgment from that. I'm just sharing the information as far as that. Now, you know, it's well documented as far as Tommy Hill saying out his own mouth, explaining the situation with him, telling or whatever about, you know, his celly, they bugged the cell and you know, and his celly said something, and he went to court, took the stand, and said what he said. We ain't got to dig too much into that. And I'm really trying to tread lightly, and I speak too much on this situation because I did an interview with Breezy Begets from OBH, who's from Richard Island, reps 10th and Popular Heavy. I mean, he spoke on this situation saying how he hate how people that's not from there speak on that situation because there's more to the story than people may know. You no, know, back coming up, you know, I had to look up to, you know what I mean, the Ram, you know what I mean, the OGs, you know what I mean, rest in peace Frank Bank, you know, he, he was the OG of the shit, you know what I mean, he, you know what I mean, built the whole rap group up, you know, so I, I grew up really, you know what I mean, looking up to them guys, you know what I'm saying, coming up on 10th Street. So what's your thoughts on how that whole situation ultimately went down? Like how they all, you know, yeah, the situation. turned on each other. Yeah, how yeah. That, yeah. What's your thoughts on how that went down? I, my whole joint with that is like, um, when, 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 when my old head, Frank Bank, died, you know what I'm saying? Everything, it was like a dark cloud over the hood when, when Bank died, you know what I'm saying? So he really was the glue to the whole Ram squad together, you know what I'm saying? So when that shit happened, I can't say I wasn't, I, I was shot when, when you know, certain guys start telling this shit, you know, but it was a lot of uh, secret shit behind the doors going on, you know, I mean, with the Tommy Hill shit and all that. Everybody, uh, everybody like, threw Tommy Hill all you under the bus. I'm not standing up for nobody at all, but I'm just saying, they threw him under the bus too, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's, it's like a whole story behind everything, you know what I mean? When they hear about Ram Squad, they always say, Tommy Hill, I mean, first thing happened is Tommy Hill, you know what I'm saying? This is the whole story behind it. I hate when people talk about that situation. When they're not from there, you don't know what happened. You know what I mean? So, you know. It, you know what I mean? It, it, it was a dark, it put a dark cloud over my hood. You know what I mean? Because the popular guys told or whatever. But, you know, I'm Mr. 1-0 now. You know what I mean? I'm holding it down now. So, at the end of the day, rest in peace on my real niggas. And it is what it is. Like, Richard Allen's still on the map, though. You know what I'm saying? What you say? You want to condone them? what Tommy did or whatever case may be, but he's saying like people threw him all the way under the bus. So he don't really like when people that's not from there speak on that situation. And Ben's though I ain't from Richard Island and I don't know the whole story behind what he's speaking on. I don't really want to speak too much about all of that. I'm just sharing the information that's public that came from these people themselves. So y'all do with that information, which y'all may. But Tommy later on sometime, you know, around 2010, you know, Tommy came back to Philly. And I ain't going to say came back because they said he, according to him, he was always in Philly back and forth, or whatever the case may be. But he he did an interview in Philly announcing that he back. You know, he did a joint on Back Cave with P-Funk and Rudd when they was on 103 to beat when they had the Back Cave radio joint on 103. He did an interview with them in Philly announcing, you know, what he was trying to do, working with new artists in the city, he was messing with Lane Bean at the time, like, and uh, he was basically addressing the snitching stuff and spoke on all of that stuff himself. So you know that was that, and you know he had this little back and forth with Uski, knowing Beans or whatever the case may be. And now this one, I the second time I met Tommy, you know, later on I officially met him. Whether it was just me, you know, the first time it was a bunch of people. He just was showing everybody love, shaking everybody hand, and all of that. But he mainly mainly was dealing with Hollow at that time. So this time, you know, that he was he was lit on 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 YouTube and all of that, with dropping a bunch of content, you know, going back and forth with Beans and Oski, you know, and dropping a bunch of blogs and all of that. So I forget how we initially connected. I mean, I don't know if it was through MySpace or whatever the case may be. I don't know if he reached out first or we reached out first. But at this time, 
you know, my guy Jeff from the Muscle DVD, y'all might remember him. He got a lot of the classic footage with the top class versus um, head shots, you know, touch money and all that. That little situation, he got a lot of that content on his DVD. At this time, he wasn't doing the DVD at the time, and he was, you know, trying to get back in the mix. So me and him had connected, and he was, you know, that was my cameraman at this time. So me and him had met up with Tommy Hill at the Ritz Carlton. Like I said, I forget how we connected or who initiated or what, but I know we was going there to discuss, you know, doing some content with him, like shooting some footage for him or shooting some footage with him or whatever. So when we get there, we sit down with him. He basically explained, like, yo, I want to do a DVD. I wanted to, you know, to highlight all the beef I got, you know, with Beans and Oskino and all these different people. And I want to basically capitalize off of it, basically, like, make some money off of it. So I want to package it, put it together, and make it like it's me against all these people. So the DVD cover had me going against, like, Beans and Oskino and all this, that, and it's there. But it's not really, like, real beef. It's just, you know, I'm just make, basically just... Basically saying I'm just, you know, gassing it up to make it make some money off of it. Basically, since I'm already going back and forth with it, I'm going to want to package up, make some money. I basically want y'all, basically saying you, me, me and Jeff or whatever, I want y'all to be a part of it. And I mean, help me put it out and distribute it and we can make some money off of it. And I'll pay you and all this and the theory. So I was like, man, I wasn't really trying to do that. So I don't know if I told him that right then and there, but I knew for sure, like in my head, in my heart, like I wasn't with that. Like I ain't about to... Cause I feel like if I did do something like that, like beans or skin or at least people would probably feel like I'm cool signing it. You know I mean, I'm standing behind him and I'm with him in this. Like, so I wasn't about to involve myself in that and make it seem like I'm, you know I mean, like, so I ain't want no parts of that. Like, and if y'all know me, y'all know I don't even get down like that. I don't do stuff like that. But I understand what he was trying to do was entertainment and all that, but I wasn't about to, you know, get in involved with nothing like that. But it wasn't nothing personal with him, and I don't think he took it personal at all. Like, he just said, you know, how let me, let me know, like, or think about it or whatever the case may be when we, when we left from him. And he just hollered, like, bro, just let me know anything you need. I got you. Like, let me know. Like, and then that was the end of that. I ain't never highlighted him about that again because, like I said, I wasn't with it. So that was, wasn't even nothing for me to speak on after that. But, um, and I believe that was in, like I said, 2010. I can't remember exactly what month it was, but, you know. And then in a year later, 2011, in December, I believe, that's when he got killed outside the bar. I mean, at Mount Airy. Sources tell us exclusively tonight, a well-known local rapper has died after being shot while coming out of a Philadelphia bar. Tommy Hill has had run-ins with the law before, including a high-profile drug trial back in 2004. The former head of the rap group Ram Squad also had ties to ex-mob boss Joey Moreno. Police are still investigating Friday night shooting. It happened outside Ruben's Mark Bar in the city's East Mount Airy section. Now, some people say it was a robbery. Some people say it was a hit. I mean, but it was definitely robbery involved. So if the robbery was a cover-up or not, no one, nobody never, never know, because I don't think the people that did it ever got caught or anything like that. But I believe the manager of the bar made a statement, because I've seen that in a couple of different articles I read, that Tommy supposedly had walked out on the bill. He got drunk or got some drinks and was, I mean, just walked out. The manager had followed behind him, like, to confront him, like, to get him to pay the bill. So maybe he might have forgot and just walked out, whatever. He might have been on or whatever, but... I seen one article say, I don't know if it was confirmed in another article, one article said he went to go pay for it and then walked off or something like that. And then a the manager heard somebody like say, like, it was a robbery, give it up or something like that. And then they heard shots. So they ran back inside, got the security guard, and he came back out and was had an exchange with the, with the robbers or whatever. They had a little shootout. Nobody got hit, though. And that was that. I mean, Tommy was gone. That was 2011, December. They later had, you know, a funeral for him. Somebody got some footage of that on YouTube. I mean, showing the outcome of the funeral. A lot of people was outside, you know, paying their respects and all that. So that's that's what happened with Tommy. That's, I mean, a lot of people, that's well documented. Everybody pretty much know about that as far as him getting killed in the fashion that he did. 
I don't know if everybody knew what happened, the story behind it and all that. That's not documented because, like I said, the people, I don't think the people ever got caught for that. So, as far as the other members, 6 9 and Suave, they kind of fell under the radar. Like, it ain't really too much public information out there about them, but maybe somebody that's watching this, you know, jump in the comments who might know them personally, you could kind of, you know, clarify, let people know where they at currently, if they still around, if they still doing music. Or whatever the case may be, somebody can speak on it. As far as Boy Bex, as um, far as in recent time, in 2002, 2000, I mean 2022, 2023, I ain't really hear nothing about him on social media. But as recent as 2017, he had dropped a joint with uh, Master Killer from Wu Tang called OGs Told Me. They got a song on Spotify, it's produced by Dame Grease, and they got a video on YouTube. So that was 2017, I mean, and he got some music that's up on Spotify and stuff right now. So, I mean, I don't know how long ago that was that was updated or whatever, and I don't know if he's still been doing stuff lately, but it's a 2017, that's the update on him. As far as with his game, like, I mean, that's somebody I definitely know personally out of that group. He always been around, always been a mix. During the Bat Cave era, you know, when they had the Bat Cave wave all down there, he used to be in the mix working amongst all those guys and with some of those guys. And, you know, when they had the uh, the TV show Empire, you know, he was down with Charlie Mack. So he had worked on that and done some work on that. And I know he's still around on social media, still dab dibbling, dabbling with the music, connected to the music, some way, shape, form, or fashion, still doing music or still producing it or being around it. So... He the one of the guys from that Ram Squad weave that, you know, that I know about, that I know that's still around and all of that and still doing what he do. As far as the other people, like I said, maybe somebody know Boy Bex personally could speak on where he at right now and what he been doing. You know what I mean, Swab and 6 9 or maybe they'll hear this or hear about it or see it and, you know, decide to, to jump out there and share their story and share their perspective and what they been doing and all that and how they feel about the whole situation. But... That's the conclusion of the Ram Squad story from my perspective. Like, this ain't the official Ram Squad story because I know it's a lot of stuff they didn't, didn't get touched on, a lot of stuff didn't get covered. You know, a lot, like I said, I ain't really know too much about the other members. So, you know, this just from my perspective. You know, my interactions with Tommy Hill, how I seen it, you know, me knowing about this game, and, you know, the information that I was able to find about the group. Because, like I said, ain't a whole lot of information out there about the group as a whole, I mean, like, so hopefully them brothers is doing well and they still alive and, I mean, maybe they could share their story if they get one to this, I mean, thank y'all for tuning in, appreciate y'all for tapping in, if that's your first time tapping in, make sure y'all like, subscribe, share the content, check out the other content we got, and be on the lookout for the content that's coming, I mean, drop some comments in this joint about who y'all want to see next, you know what I mean? And, and we're going to try to make these joints like a regular thing, you know what I mean, for y'all, if y'all if y'all fucking with them and y'all want to see them. Like, so until next time, I mean, appreciate y'all tapping in. See y'all on the next episode. Philly Fame TV, we signing out.